main step of lithography is transferring a pattern over our sample. To do this, we need a pattern and a lithographic agent to transfer it over some material that fixes this pattern over the sample, like we do in photography, with photosensitive material over photographic film. From this main principle, a lot of lithographic techniques can derive, the main one being optical lithography or photolithography. Roughly speaking, to perform an optical lithography, we need an optical mask with a pattern to be transferred and a resist sensitive to the lithographic agent, light in this case, called photoresist. The role of the optical mask is to transfer a pattern over the photoresist, allowing or not the light to pass through. As we can see in the slide, the light passes through the mask, whose base material is glass, exposing the resist. Then, the exposed resist is developed using a chemical developer, and it can be used as a protective mask for following etching processes. The parts of the resist affected by light suffer a chemical change. For the so-called positive photoresist, this chemical change makes the resist suitable to be dissolved by the developer. The resist disappears at the illuminated parts and remains at the non-illuminated parts. In the case of the so-called negative photoresist, the chemical change makes the photoresist insensitive to the developer. The resist remains at the illuminated parts and disappears at the non-illuminated parts. The key points that we have to take into account are the glass mask and the system to perform the lithography, which are the most expensive parts of the process. But despite the costs of the optical mask and the lithography system, this technique allows mass production and becomes the most popular mainly for the fact that it allows parallel production. That is, we can lithograph a lot of systems using only one step of light exposure. To achieve nanometer scales using optical lithography, it is very important to pay attention to two key concepts, resolution and depth of focus. Both depend on the main characteristic of the light, its wavelength. The shorter the wavelength is, the smaller the resolution, which means that we can achieve smaller dimensions. That is why, as we will see, the optical systems have evolved to smaller wavelength as is possibly compatible with available photoresists. The other key concept, depth of focus, is related to the part of the resist where the light is well focused, the part of the resist thickness that is effectively affected by light. The shorter the wavelength is, the thinner the well insulated resist is. When we want to pattern nanometer scale geometry, the thickness of the resist has to be small. Related to this fact is what we call a minimum feature size, which is directly related with the wavelength and the thickness of the photoresist. To perform an optical lithography, we need, aside from an optical source, a system to focus the light on the glass mask and on the sample to be fabricated. The system is made up of different parts. The main of them is the optical system, composed by a complex mount of lenses to focalize the light and avoid the possible aberrations. The optical system has a key associated parameter called numerical aperture, which is related to refraction index and the size of the lenses. Numerical aperture plays an important role both in the resolution and in the depth of focus. Larger numerical aperture systems collect more light and provide brightness images and enhance the resolution of the system but decrease the depth of the field, which is the thickness of the focus zone. The fact that numerical aperture depends on the refraction index drives us to search for lithographic techniques not only playing with the light wavelength but also with the surrounding medium, the medium in which the lithographic system is, with the refraction index of this medium. Nanofabrication needs for a good resolution, as small as possible. As we see, the shorter the wavelength, the smaller the resolution. This is why we need to develop photolithographic techniques which use the smallest wavelength of light as possible. Taking a look at the light spectrum, we can go from visible light, the wavelength of which is used by photography, to ultraviolet light, with wavelengths of around 300 nanometers, used for photolithographic techniques for micrometric resolutions, and then, as the technological needs require smaller resolution, we move towards the shorter wavelengths, as the laser light, based on KRF, with 248 nanometers of wavelength, 193 nanometers for ARF laser, or 157 nanometers for fluor laser. But technology does not stop here. It goes further, until the extreme ultraviolet, 
with a wavelength of around 13 nanometers and also until the X-rays, with wavelengths below 1 nanometer. These shorter wavelengths imply a high energy of light and thus different sources to obtain the light from this part of the spectrum and an increasing complexity of the optical systems and also an increasing cost. It is important to note that the reduction in the wavelength of the light is not directly related with the reduction of the resolution size due to the fact that there is a complex system involved in the photolithographic process. The resolution depends also on the optical systems, which means on the possible aberrations that can appear and also on the diffraction effects of the light. The resolution depends also on the chemical characteristics of the photoresist. If the resist can or can't replicate exactly the same sizes as the pattern of the optical mask. This is why we will see in the following slides some complementary strategies with the wavelength reduction. There are three approximations to perform optical lithography using UV light. The simplest one is putting directly the glass mask over the sample in contact with the resist. This is a direct lithography but with the fact that the glass mask will be contaminated by the resist, which is the main drawback of this approximation. The other drawback is related with the diffraction of the light, which increases its unwanted effects in nanolithography, due to the fact that the smaller the window through which the light passes is, the higher the effects of the diffraction are. With UV light, the resolution using contact lithography is around 500 nanometers. To avoid this contamination effect, we can force a gap between the glass mask and the sample, but in this case, diffraction effects also remain enlarging the minimum feature size that we can achieve. This approximation is called proximity lithography, and the resolution is a little worse than in contact lithography. In this case, the resolution is around 1 micron. To overcome the drawbacks of the two previous approximations, a complex system of lenses placed in between the glass mask and the sample allows us to achieve good resolutions without contamination, around 200 nanometers. This approximation is called projection technique and is the most expensive approximation, but it's the most popular to attain smaller resolutions and mass production. To enhance the resolution of our photolithography, aside from using the projection technique, we can play with the refraction index of the surrounding medium, where by surrounding medium we mean the medium in which the light propagates towards the sample, as can be the use of water, as the medium through which light travels. Increasing the index of refraction increases the numerical aperture and thus decreases the size of the feature that we can draw, enhancing the resolution. The index of refraction of water is around 1.4, this index depends on the water, that is, on the purity of the water. The lithographic technique, which uses water as a surrounding medium, is called immersion lithography and is used with UV light and also with EUV light. Immersion lithography enhances the numerical aperture, increasing the resolution, but at the same time decreasing the depth of focus. This last unwanted effect could be overcome using a thinner photoresist. There are different possibilities for commercial photolithography apparatuses, depending on the wavelength and the use, research or mass production. The shorter the wavelength is, the higher the cost is and, of course, the complexity of the system. UV systems have a refractive lens system, the typical system of microscopes, but EUV systems need to use a reflective optical system due to the fact that the EUV wavelength is highly absorbed by the materials of the refractive lenses. Also, for X-ray systems, the lenses have to be made of compatible X-ray materials and there has to be a very small gap between the masks and the sample, around 15 nanometers of gap distance, which implies a complicated and high-cost system. Photolithography systems are more than projection systems. Normally, for mass production, foundries fabricate the electronic systems over large wafers, around 450 millimeters of diameter nowadays, replicating the same system a lot of times over the same wafer. This fact implies that photolithography has to be done a lot of times over the wafer. This can be achieved using a photolithography system called stepper, which performs repeatedly the same photolithography over the wafer, moving it using a movable sample holder. Another aspect we have to take into account is the fact that the micro or nanoelectronic systems need a lot of fabrication processes, which require their associated lithographs. Each lithography needs to be well aligned with the previous one. To achieve the high degree of alignment required, 
Photolithography systems, the mass production ones, require a complex system of recognition of alignment marks and also a well-controlled movement of the sample holder. All of these aspects enlarge the complexity and cost of photolithography system, but despite that, they allow us to achieve spectacular resolutions, as for example, nodes of fabrication of 15 nanometers of resolution, or even smaller, pushing further the capabilities of the electronics industry.